Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about some of the corollaries that follow from the triangle theorem. I will also explain what a corollary is. But to lead to those corollaries, let's first look at the following problem here. In the diagram, line AB is parallel to line DE. The measure of angle BAC is equal to 2x minus 20, and the measure of angle ACB is equal to 30, and the measure of angle DEF is equal to x plus 55. Find the measure of angle CED. So the first thing we want to do here is label all the knowns that we have in the diagram. Now that we have everything labeled in the diagram, how do we find the measure of angle CED? Well, first, we want to find the value of x using any theorems that we know about parallel lines or the triangle theorem that we developed in the previous YouTube video. Basically, that the sum of all angles in a triangle add up to 180. Well, if we look at the diagram, what do we know about measure of angle CED and measure of angle DEF? Well, we know that those two angles are supplementary. And since they're supplementary, they will add to 180 degrees. So let's substitute x plus 55 for the measure of angle DEF. And once we substitute, we can actually solve for the measure of angle CED in terms of x. So here we end up with the measure of angle CED to be equal to 125 minus x. So how do we use this one now? What can we do with this angle? Well, if we look at the diagram, we know that this angle here, the angle CED, that I'm going to label this way, is actually equal to in measure to this angle, which is angle ABC. Why is that? Well, because here we have two parallel lines, which is line AB and line DE, cut by the transversal, and the transversal is uh, line BE. Uh, then these alternate interior angles must be congruent or equal in measure, okay? So therefore, we can actually write that the measure of angle ABC is also 125 minus X. So if we look at triangle ABC here, so let's uh, highlight the triangle, uh, we actually have everything that is needed to solve for the value of X because we know that this is now 125 minus X. So now we have 2x minus 20 for one of the angles, 125 minus x for the second angle, and 30 degrees for the third angle. So all we need to do is just add them all up and set them equal to 180 degrees. So here we can write that the measure of angle ABC plus the measure of angle BAC plus the measure of angle ACB is equal to 180. Again, because in a triangle, the sum of measures of the three interior angles is 180. So that's something that we learned in the previous YouTube video. So at this point, all we need to do is just substitute the figures. So we obtain 125 minus X plus 2X minus 20 plus 30 is equal to 180 by substituting. Now let's bring all the unknowns on the left side and the figures on the right side so we can solve for the value of X here. So here we obtain a value of X to be equal to 45. Okay, so the question is asking us to find the measure of angle CED. So all we need to do now is substitute into this expression here, right? That the measure of angle CED is 125 minus X. So let's substitute 45 for the X. After substituting, we obtain a measure of angle CED to be equal to 80. And that is the answer, okay? Uh, we can actually double check this as well, if this works or not, by substituting the 45 into the 2x minus 20, okay? So first of all, here we have 80 degrees, right? So here we have 30 degrees, so we have that already. And if we substitute 45 into 2x minus 20, then we get 70 degrees, okay? So let's see if it works. So 30 plus 70 is 100 plus 80 is 180 degrees. So it actually works. So the answer again is measure of angle CD is equal to 80 degrees. Now, as you can see from this lesson, there are many corollaries that follow from this, okay? 
So let's first define the word corollary. Now, here's a definition according to Wikipedia. In mathematics and logic, a corollary is a theorem of less importance, which can be readily deduced from a previous, more notable statement. A corollary could, for instance, be a proposition which is incidentally proved while proving another proposition, while it could also be used more casually to refer to something which naturally or incidentally accompanies something else. So what, so does, what that does that mean? Well, in our previous YouTube video, we actually proved the following theorem, that in a triangle, the sum of the measures of the three interior angles is 180. We ended up proving that theorem, okay? Now, a corollary is a theorem that emerges from this theorem, okay? It's a proposition. For example, we proved this theorem, and now that we can develop other theorems pertaining to triangles that emerge from that, okay? So let's look at an example. Let's go back to the first problem here that we solved. And for example, here, we know that, for example, that if we solve this angle CED, right, we also obtain 80 degrees here. And let's say that we know that this is 30 degrees, okay? So let's say that we don't know anything about this. We, we don't know that that is 70 degrees here. But if this angle here, right, if this angle of 80 degrees is congruent to this angle CED, and we also know that these vertical angles are congruent, and automatically, what can we deduce about this angle and this angle? Basically, what can we say about angle BAC and angle CDE? Well, that they have to be congruent as well, okay? So basically what we're saying is that if two angles of a triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then automatically the third angles must be congruent as well, okay? And that is also referred as to the AA postulate. And that now emerges from the theorem that the sum of the meshes of the three interior angles of a triangle is 180. Why is that? because we know that if this is 30 and 80, this must be 70 over here. And this one also must be 70 degrees, okay? So let's actually list some of these corollaries now. So here's the first corollary again. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are congruent. And in this example, we're saying here that, uh, that this angle E is congruent to this angle B, for example, it's 40 degrees, right? Then we have this angle C, which is congruent to angle F, so we're saying that that is 80 degrees. So again, what can you say about the third angles, A and D? Inevitably, they also must be congruent no matter what, okay? And again, that is also known as the AA postulate, okay? So in a proof, it's totally okay to write a, a postulate as a reason. So let's go back again to our previous example to develop the second corollary. So measure of angle DEF, we never really calculated the value, right? So we figure out that the X value is 45. So therefore the measure of angle DEF, 100 degrees here. So let's label this, this is 100 degrees, okay? Well, we also know that this is 30, so therefore this is 30 degrees, okay? Can we figure out what this angle is? Well, yes. We know that this angle over here, that is 70 degrees, okay? And we know that these two must be congruent because we're dealing with alternate interior angles that are congruent due to those two parallel lines. So this angle here also must be 70, okay? So let me zoom in a little bit. So what do we notice here? If we look at this triangle here, okay? So now this is considered the exterior angle, the exterior angle of triangle CED, okay? So what do we notice here? Well, we notice that this 100 is equal to the sum of the 30 and the 70, okay? So that's now another corollary that we can develop here. 
that the exterior angle of a triangle is always going to be the sum of the remote interior angles. That can easily be proven because we know that this angle here is 80 degrees, right? Because the sum of all the angles inside a triangle is 180. So that is always going to be the exterior angle and the sum of the remote interior angles. So the corollary is the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of the two remote interior angles. As you can see in the figure, measure of angle A is always equal to measure of angle C plus measure of angle D. Let's look at another corollary that emerges from the theorem. We know that the measure of all the interior angles add up to 180, right? What if we take this triangle and make it in such a way that all the sides are congruent here, like that, okay? Which means that each angle is also going to be congruent. So the definition of an equilateral triangle is a triangle is equilateral if and only if all sides are congruent. Which means that this is also an equiangular triangle. So a triangle is equiangular if and only if all angles are congruent. So let's say we have the points to be A, B, and C in the triangle. So if we take measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus measure of angle C to be equal to 180, but we know that each of these angles, they're all equal, right, in the equiangular triangle. So that means that if we let each angle to be equal to x, then we simply have x plus x plus x is equal to 180. Or simply, we can write that 3x is equal to 180, and therefore x is equal to 60. So that's basically the corollary now that emerges, right? That every equiangular triangle has every angle to be 60 degrees. Thus, the corollary is each angle of an equiangular triangle has measure of 60 degrees. So let's look at another corollary. The question is, how many obtuse angles can a triangle have? Here's an example of an obtuse angle. Well, the answer is very simple here, that you can only have one. Why is that? How would you prove it from the theorem that the measures of all angles add up to 180? Again, if we look at the measures of all angles here, and we select an angle that is more than 94C here, and let's say we rewrite it this way by subtracting measure of angle C on both sides, but we know that this here, again, is more than 90 degrees, right? So let's say if we subtract an angle that is higher than 90, then how can we rewrite this as an inequality? Well, it means that the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B has to be less than 90, okay? And again, by the definition, we know that obtuse angles are greater than 90, okay? So that means that uh, neither angle A nor angle B can be greater than 90, okay? So we write not greater than 90 and not greater than 90, respectively. So each have to be less than 90, okay? So the corollary can be written now as follows. In a triangle, there can be at most one obtuse angle. Well, that brings us to the question, what about a right angle? How many right angles can a triangle have? So let's look at this right triangle. How many right angles can a triangle have? And again, we use the same reasoning here. We add up all the angles to 180 uh, because of the theorem. And the corollary now goes as follows, that now we have measure of angle C is 90. So if we substitute, we end up with measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus 90 is equal to 180. So therefore, the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B has to be equal to 90, both of them, right? Because they're now both acute angles. So it turns out that you cannot have another angle that is 90 degrees, because if we assume that to be 90, then measure of angle B would be zero. So therefore, it cannot be equal to 90. And this one can also not be equal to 90. So it has to be less than 90, respectively. So the corollary goes, in a triangle, there can be at most one right angle. Now, if we look at this example again, uh, we just notice that measure of angle A plus measure of angle B both 
add up to 90. So what can we say about these two angles? What can we say about measure of angle A plus measure of angle B? We know that those two angles also are supplementary. Well, we know that these two angles are also complementary. And that's another corollary that we can develop here. And the corollary says that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. Now that we have developed all these corollaries, let's summarize them. So again, from the theorem in a triangle, the sum of the measures of the three interior angles is 180. From this theorem, many corollaries emerge. And the corollaries that we learn are if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are congruent, also known as the AA postulate. The second corollary is the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. The third corollary was each angle of an equiangular triangle has measure of 60 degrees. Then the fourth one, in a triangle there can be at most one right angle or a two's angle. And the fifth is the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So that's basically it for today's lesson. Again, thank you for watching and have a great day.